My name is Christer. And I'm David, and we're coming from the Chaos Pilots in Denmark. And uh, first of all, we want to want to thank Andy for inviting us here. Thank yes. you so much for giving us the, the opportunity to, to actually address this beautiful crowd. So, what is the Chaos Pilots? As Andy said, it's a school. It's a polymath approach for fostering creativity, entrepreneurship, and leadership. We offer an education that is not so much about breaking people fit into the future. We're giving them opportunity to create their own future. We are very passionate about helping people realize their values and their dreams, helping them to navigate change and uncertainty, tapping into their creativity and potential, finding a direction, and get going. We're here today to talk to you about the leadership that allows that to happen, a leadership that we have acquired for more than 20 years in our work. And why is this important, you might ask? Why the hell is he talking about that? Well, we live in extraordinary times. We are experiencing a change, a shift, from a more of an industrial economy towards a knowledge economy. In fact, we are moving further, more into what we could label as a creative economy. We are experiencing that increasingly not only capital and technology are becoming goods, but so is also knowledge. That means that if you want to have success, you need to look for other factors. Factors such as the individual's creativity, passion, and desire to make things happen. That is why it's important. In our work, we have identified three key elements, three qualities, three principles that we deem necessary for making creative leadership a success. The first principle is, it starts with you. Leadership is about people. It's about human beings being in relationship with other human beings. It's about how you see yourself, and it's about how you choose to believe about yourself. And it's about how you choose to see the world that surrounds you. Do you see ability, or do you see disability? We have a little experiment we would like to invite you on. Are you into that? Yes. yes. Good. So actually, here's how it's going to go. Chris and I will demonstrate first, and then you get to do it afterwards. So just watch and learn. Chris, do we need some papers and yes. a pen? Just gonna put this you get down the here. green. I take the black. You take the black. I got the green. So basically, what we're going to do, Chris, is on this piece of paper, we're going to draw a stripple. Mm -hmm. We have two seconds to draw that stripple. Are you ready? Born ready. Two seconds. Okay, now we exchange ripples. So I get yours and you get mine. I got Christus here. What we're going to do now is that we in 30 seconds are going to create a piece of art from the ripple mm -hmm. and give it a name. So 30 seconds. Are you ready? Yes. Please go. Ho oh, ho. What is this? This is not what I expected from you. I expected more. What do you think that I'm going to do with this? Okay, time out. Chris is modeling how not to do this right now. <laughs> so basically, what you want to do when you receive the scribble is that you want to open up towards it, allow yourself to be inspired and create from it. So are you ready to go again, Krista? We can try. Okay, good. <laughs> Two seconds, a scribble. Exchange. You get mine, I get yours. Thank you. And now we have 30 seconds to create from the stripple and give it a name. Are you ready? Yes. Go. Go. Done. Should we show our yes. pieces of art? <laughs> what is yours, Krista? Girl on ice. And mine is happy frog. So, now it's your turn. So, please reach under your chair. There's a piece of paper there. And find a pen. And it needs to go a bit faster. Because our time is running out. Now have this piece of paper in front of you. And you have... You now have two seconds to draw a stripple. Stop. Now, 
turn to somebody next to you and exchange the shrivel. You will just have to work with it. And now you're sitting with somebody else's shrivel in front of you. You now have 30 seconds to produce a piece of art and give it a name. Are you ready? Go! And there's five seconds left. Stop. And please stop now. So to all of you, please take your piece of art and put it above your head like this. Hold. And hold, because Christopher is going to take photos of this. And what a beautiful, what a beautiful field of artwork hold. we have produced in 30 seconds in here from Shripples we did not know anything of. Very nice improvisation. Thank you. Give yourself a hand. So. so you were not supposed to talk. <laughs> so, um, attention. Basically, I just want to hear, what did you produce down here? What was your strip? What was your piece of art? A man on a motorcycle. Beautiful. What about, what about over here? What did you do? Uh, I kind of saw a face and made it into, hey, TEDx. You made a face that said, hey, TEDx. <laughs> Great. So here's why this is important. We are meeting scribbles every day in the form of impulses, in the form of people, in the form of questions. And we can choose to meet these impulses in two different ways. We can either block, like Krista demonstrated in the beginning, saying, this sucks, I don't get it. What the hell is this? I can't create from it. I'm going to throw it away. Or we can choose to accept, as you modeled very beautifully just before, and say, OK, I'm going to give this a piece of my mind for just a short amount of time and see what I can actually create from this. So it's a choice you make as a human being? Do I choose to block or do I choose to accept? And we can promise you in this acceptance, there's a lot of possibilities. So that's a question to you. And first of all, it starts with you. How do you meet scribbles in your life? Just ponder on that. Right. Moving on to the next principle, the team is the key. Last year, we sent a team of students to Bogota, Colombia. They were given one assignment which was, which was about creating six interventions with the people of Bogota. I'm not sure how it is here, but Bogota, Colombia, at best, have a dubious reputation in our country. Something about the crime, the kidnapping, the drugs, <laughs> the guerrilla, the paramilitary, not exactly the nicest or easiest place to work in. But Colombia also had a different side, a side that it showed us. Very friendly, very welcoming, indeed very rewarding to work in. What our students recognized when they were there was that there was a great need for civic engagement. They wanted to do a project around that. It was something about empowering people to promote the changes that they would like to see happen in their city. So they came back to us and said, the brief is too, too small. It needs to be more ambitious. We need to do more than this. So they came up with a, with a concept called Cien un Dia, 100 in a day. So they wanted to shift from six engagements, six interventions to 100. They also recognized that in order to be true to their objective, it was not enough that they would do it. They would need the people of Bogota to get involved, to take charge, to take responsibility for making this happen. As such, they needed to create a very different type of organization. A few months later, 250 interventions took place all across Bogota. Can you share some of the interventions that you saw? 
what was it? Some of them are x-rated, but <laughs> there was something about planting trees in the streets. There was something about promoting nudity, promoting equal rights, gay rights. There was something about children's rights. There was about helping homeless people and people that had committed a lot of crime, drug addicts, to find a new path in life. 250 interventions took place. More than 3,500 people were directly engaged in making this event happen. A couple of hundred thousand people observed it happen in one way or the other. More than that, the organization created continued to work, and this year we will see a new Cianindia taking place in Bogota. Actually, it has spread, so it will happen in more places in Colombia. And even more, more so, it will happen outside Colombia, for instance, Copenhagen and Cape Town this year. So truly, it's been a massive success. When asking the students, what made it a success? Who made it a success? Who took the decisions? Who came up with the ideas? Who showed the way? The answer is very clear. This was not the work of one or the few. This was the commitment of the many. Investigating even more, three qualities stands out to you. One is high productivity. In order to make a lot of things happen in a very short period of time, you need to have a high level of productivity. Second one is passion. This was truly a hard project, something that they burned for, something that they would like to see happen, and that carried the project a long way. But you also need a third quality, high positivity. In projects like this, you will experience setbacks. There will be ups and downs and back and forth. You need a positive attitude, a creating a positive atmosphere to making it happen. As a creative leader, you need to identify and work with those three qualities, making them come together and finding that sweet spot where they overlap and nurture it. That is the work of the creative leader. So we have a question for you. Which of these three Ps would you like to turn the volume up for in your team? And what would be available if you did? The third principle is results matter. We believe that when you produce results and when you produce positive change, it should impact in three different directions. It should impact you and your team, it should impact your target group, and it should impact the surrounding community or the greater good. And we have a little story that reflects this. In 2004, five girls from the Chaos Pilots Team 9 went to Sarajevo. They went to Sarajevo because they wanted to study urban development. At that time, Sarajevo had come, just come out of a tragic civil war. A lot of people had been killed. The city had been bombed. Basically, it was a city that was traumatized. These five girls believed that this would be an interesting place to study urban development because it was on a lead to a new beginning. What they met when they came down there was something completely different. They met talent drain. They made a very, very low initiative when it comes to arts, culture, and business. And they made a young population that were highly frustrated because it felt it had no voice. So these five girls created a project called Ask Sayevo. And basically what Ask Sayevo was about was to give voice back to the young generation. So they invited 600 young people to paint their hopes and dreams for the future on a 5,000 square feet canvas. They did. And this canvas was then wrapped around the Domlavich, a former youth house that had meant a lot to the young population in Sarajevo. And here the Domlavich stood with the canvas wrapped around it with the hopes and the dreams from the young people, manifesting that there was a voice, there was hope, and there was aspirations for the future. The five girls then took the canvas and brought it back to Norway, where they engaged young and upcoming designers in creating pieces of designs from this canvas. They did bags, they did clothing, and they did pieces of art. These designs were then sold on net auctions, generating capital. And then the five girls brought the capital back to Sarajevo, where they invested this capital in a youth organization which purpose was to bring back the Domlavich Youth House into its original use. So what these five girls did was that they created the result that impacted in three different directions. 
First, they created a pretty vibrant training field for themselves to study urban development. Second of all, they impacted the target group, the young generation in Sarajevo, by giving them hope, by giving them a space where they could express their voice for the future. And they also impacted Sarajevo in a way of inspiration because Sarajevo was exposed to its young generation and the hope that it actually had. The five girls were also truly masters at something else. They were creating results that were creating results. So basically, they created result one, which was creating a space for where the young people could speak out their dreams for the future and get in touch with that voice. The second result was that they brought the canvas back to Norway and created designs, sold the designs on the net auctions, generated money. And the third result was that they brought back the money and reinvested it in a youth organization that would bring the Domlavich back to its original use. So it was three results that were very depending on each other. So creative leadership is about creating results that creates results that impacts in three different directions. So that's a question to you. Where in your life as of now can you start creating results that creates results that impacts in three different directions? Okay, now we heard about the three principles. In order to bring this into the essence of what creative leadership is all about, we will give you a small story from something that does not originate from us. It's something that originates from Bernino and the statement he made about success and music in the 60s. Bernino pointed out that there were two great bands of the 60s. One was a band that sold millions of albums and inspired millions of people and followers all over the world. That was the Beatles. Second band was the Velvet Underground. According to Branino, though, they sold maybe around 5,000 copies of their first album when it came out. But everyone that bought one of those albums started a band. And that is the essence of creative leadership. You want to create more leaders, not more followers. So to wrap up, because our time is running out, creative leadership is about that it starts with you. How do you choose to meet scribbles? What is your attitude towards the scribbles you meet? The team is the key. Create a team of high productivity, high positivity, and high passion. And results matter. Create results that create results that impacts in three different directions. Thank you very much. Welcome.